Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Bring It Down. I made it to Maiden Spring Farm off camera. Now we're gonna go inside and speak to the people here. Also, is Hexogen encumbered? He is. Now we're gonna see if the people here will buy our stuff from us. Or if they have anything worth trading for. Right there it is. I have two shovels. Hmm. Uh, someone definitely looks after this grave. A young woman is buried here. And we're gonna loot her corpse for two rubles. Oh man. Well, it's two rubles I didn't have before. Very loud moo. A tall, lean lad about 17 years old stands at the gate of the farm, hidden behind the fence. He lifts his rifle in an uncertain gesture, hitting himself on the cheek with his huge wooden buttstock. I stay where you are, man, or I'll shoot. I hold your fire, kid. The guy looks around in fear and lifts his rifle slightly. It's hard to understand what he aims at. The heavy barrel is dancing in his trembling hands, pointing to your chest, and then to your head, and under your feet. Why would I do it? Because I'm a simple traveler and wish you no evil. The tone of your voice seems to be having a soothing effect. The lad lowers his rifle, still uncertain, almost letting it out of his hands as he does so. It's hard to believe it, man, but I can see you're not lying. If you want to have a rest, or have some goods to trade, you can come in. Father will see you. Thanks for the trust. But if you don't mind, I'd chat with you some more. The guy looks at you dubiously. Uh, what else? What else do you want to know? Uh, who are you? The lad leans on his rifle as if it was a walking stick. Any shooter with an ounce of respect for his trade would have a heart attack at seeing this. My name's August. I'm Dad's heir, because I'm his only son. I see. Uh, what can you tell me about your father? You better talk to him yourself. I don't want to discuss him behind his back. It's not nice, and it's wrong. Okay, let me ask you something else then. Lad shoots an intent look around, turns to you and nods. Uh, what are you busy with? Don't you see what I am doing? I'm guarding this gate. We're strict about it now. Even a crow wouldn't fly by. Got it? Uh, why are these security measures? And why now? You see fear showing in the lad's face. He presses his rifle closer again, looking as if he's ready to use it any moment. Uh, but he calms down. He looks at you with his sad, wet eyes. Don't ask. Don't ask, man. Better talk to father. Yes, better talk to him about everything. He's the head of our family. Okay. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? This is our family plot. Father built it with his own hands, on top of someone's uh, country house, I believe. We all grew up here. My sisters, uh, my sister and I. Uh, now I guard it. Father reinforces and fixes it. And Mum and Beat Ruta are responsible for food. May you live in peace. Have you heard anything interesting lately? Uh, many creeks here, as father says, are as foul as they can get. But ours, ours is very clean. Water springs out from the ground not far from here. It streams right past our fortress, as you can see. Try the water, man. You won't taste any better. I'll definitely taste the water from this stream. I don't think that I actually can. Well, let's speak to the, uh, the father. You see a sturdy, broad-shouldered man in his 40s. He's wearing a long, hand-embroidered shirt and a homespun trousers with a frayed rope for a belt. His expression is sullen and unfriendly, hardened by a life of work, and his face hasn't seen a razor in quite a while. Having noticed your stare, the man snorts at you. I don't know what stories my offspring has told you, or what you have told him to make him let you in, but we don't like travelers here. We're not a guest house, so spit it out and we'll say our goodbyes. Now, why so angry? I ran across your farm and thought, why not pop in and have a chat? The farmer stares at you for several long seconds, and he casts a quick glance towards the shed, where a rusty scythe leans against an unfinished wooden door. After a quick calculation, he speaks again. Life is hard on those who aren't careful around strangers, but it's not kind of those who kick them out either. If you've come to talk, alright, let's talk. Although I'm not exactly good company. 
There's no place for deep thoughts when our mind is mostly occupied with questions like, how will I feed my family? Or what materials should I use to mend the pig-sized roof before winter? I'd like to ask you a few questions. The man stares at you coldly. You assume he's listening. Uh, what's your name, mate? The man looks at you scornfully, clearly feeling that it's none of your business. Perhaps to get rid of you faster, he replies. Constantine. Or do you need my full name? Constantine Ivan Ivanovich, then. Don't tell me yours. You're leaving soon anyway, right? Well, I prefer to observe the formalities. My name is... The farmer appears completely uninterested. Uh, Donnie. Uh, the name you gave him falls fails to make the slightest impression. Okay, Donnie. Call yourself Lavrenti Berea. Berea? Berea. For all I care. I didn't ask, and I don't give a darn. Uh, right. Well, can you answer a couple questions anyway? Uh, what are you busy with? I'm working. I work my fingers to the bone, actually. Who else is going to feed my family? A tramp like you won't understand. Don't jump to conclusions. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? Look around. It was supposed to be a manor. What you're seeing could be called a farm, if one were feeling generous. You can see your companion's look is getting warmer. Apparently he likes the topic you're discussing. A hard to build a nice, neat domicile when all your materials have been scavenged from smoldering ruins. But it keeps off the rain, and even the pigsty pig is solidly built, unlike some other houses in Ultranoye. And the fence. Yeah. Me and my old lady, we were young when we built it. She had a bun in the oven then, our eldest. Yet she worked alongside me every single day. I sawed and split the logs. She dug the holes. We spent our entire life on this patch of land. And now... He swallows a lump in his throat, and his face returns to its previous sullen expression. I got your point. Do you know any interesting rumors? The farmer closes his eyes and rocks on his heels. You think I have time for rumors, pal? You're killing me with your talk, draining my very soul. You're like a relentless, buzzing mosquito. Can you see when it's time to leave a man in peace? You're worse than those mushroom cultists from Krasno. They're not bad exactly, but their droning about global unity could drive a man mad. Now let's change the subject. Now the man's face is as still as the statue's. He looks at you over gloomily, obviously not enthused with your suggestion. He is mellowed enough to listen to your questions. That's all he's willing to do. I'll tell me about the grave by the creek. You want to be the sharpest pencil in the box to see your words have astounded the farmer. He flinches at the mention of the mysterious grave. His expressive face makes you feel almost physical, how hard it is for him to utter his next phrase. What a... Nothing is too low for you, is it? Mind your own business. What do you care whose grave it is? I dug it myself, with these very hands, with... The man lapses into silence for several seconds, then coughs into his folded hands. We, my lad and I, we were driving wolves off our land to stop them digging under a fence, and we stumbled across bones, human bones next to the beehive. So we gave them a decent Christian burial. The wolves' bones can dry out in the sun. They can do without a grave. But they rot forever, bastards. If there is a god in this world, may he give them what they deserve. The farmer crosses himself vehemently and looks away, eyes full of despair. A very commendable of you. But why then is there a marker with uh, Masha written on it? The man shudders at the sound of this name. It was in the dog tag that we found next to the corpse. Okay, well in our turbulent times, there's still an honest man who will give a pile of bones a proper burial. Respect. Alright, I don't think there's anything else we can talk to him about right now. I don't know how much they're going to actually tell us since we... Of course not, I'm encumbered. Well, I don't think anyone here is going to trade with us. Yeah, I don't know how much information we're actually going to get about what happens since we don't have the quest for this location. A tall, sturdily built, and heavy-featured middle-aged woman stands in front of you. Her weather-beaten face, the coarse skin on her hands, and even her bow-legged gait imply years of exhausting housework. The fatigue in her eyes backs up this observation. 
As she notices you, she tenses up, but then smiles. I'm sorry, but I don't talk to strangers. If you have business here, go talk to my hubby. It must be somewhere in the yard. Hmm, okay. I think I'll do just that. Actually, I'm going to ransack you guys' home. Oh, she'll trade with me. Perfect. Um, I see a nice young girl in a simple calico dress and beige cardigan of coarse wool. Blue-eyed and short-haired, skinny and graceful in her own unique way, the girl looks nothing like her sturdy, hard-laboring parents, whom you caught a glimpse of as he passed through the fortified yard. Smiling shyly, she quickly lowers her eyes. Apparently she doesn't often have a chance to talk to someone from the big world outside. Hello. That must be a mistake. If you have some business, you should go to dad or mom. Well, obviously, but it's better to get to know everyone. A reckless spark shines in the girl's deep blue eyes. It seems she was hoping you would say something along these lines. Why, why would you want to know me? Am I that interesting? Uh, this is what I wanted to find out. Can I ask a couple of questions? The girl giggles happily. Even if your previous actions caused some embarrassment, it seems to have passed. As you wish, like my mum says that deep inside every man, except her father, is nothing but a dirty pig. Anyway, you're more interesting than Pigsy and Eugene. Those are our swine. I'm so sick of them. I feed them every day, never so much as thank you and never so much as a thank you in return. Let's talk, but remember, in the land I come from, talking to such a beautiful girl is considered for foreplay? What? I wonder if that's just weirdly translated. The girl seems wary, but at the same time her piercing eyes are appraising you. She wishes to be cautious, even while talking to this mysterious stranger, the traveler who appeared out of nowhere at her farm. They're reluctant. The young beauty finds herself immersed in the atmosphere of romance and mystery you've brought into her little world. Oh yes? And what happens next? Now what do you think? Wink. The girl giggles playfully. Your winning personality has saved you yet again. I don't know. I don't have much experience in these matters. You, on the other hand, look as if you know a thing or two about it. Tell me, have you known many women? I feel embarrassed to tell you, but frankly, not a single one. There's no loud explosion or even groan of regret. The growing tension simply fades away. All the emotions that were clouding the girl's face a second ago, fear, curiosity, interest in the forbidden fruit, disperse. And what's left is an air of deep frustration and relief. I see. Well, okay, right. Where were we? I was asking questions and you were answering. Uh, the girl rubs her forehead uh, doubtfully, as if she needs time to think your suggestion through. Still, a couple of seconds later she shrugs and smiles uncertainly. It's not easy, talking to you. I'd say you're weird, but it's better to talk to you than not to talk at all. Uh, what are we going to talk about? I have a couple of urgent questions. Her smile starts to fade. She'd been hoping to learn more about the big, bright world outside, not become the object of your interrogation. Still, a bad conversation is better than no conversation at all. Okay, what do you want to know? How's life on the outskirts of civilization? The girl sighs dreamily folds her arms, and peers at distant lands only she can see. When I threaten Dad that I'll die of boredom if he doesn't show me the big city, or at least one of the trade settlements to the north, he says boredom is the price we have to pay for safety. Perhaps he's right, but I so want to see, this, see the world. This farm, it's a good place, don't get me wrong. We grow our own food. There's clear running water right at our gate. I've seen it all so many times. I've explored everything, touched everything. There's nothing surprising or new that or interesting left here. Last winter our neighbors, the ones who brew moonshine, I brought us lollipops from Krasno. I'll never forget it. It was so beautiful, this red rooster on a stick. I took it in my mouth and sucked at it and burst out crying. Even though it was tasty and sweet, but at that moment I realized I wasn't a little girl anymore. Until that day, a lollipop had been a thing from a book or my parents' stories. How much more is there I've never seen or tried? I'm dying to know it all, to see it all.
The experience comes with time. Don't let such trifles upset you. Chin up. Who knows? Perhaps one day you will travel. The girl smiles dreamily. Thank you. I want it so badly. Then it will come true. Let me ask you a couple more questions. What other questions do you have? What do you occupy yourself with here? The girl smiles, although the expression doesn't reach her sad, bleak eyes. I like working with animals, like the hens and piglets. At least it's not as predictable as cooking or gardening. They rise up to some new kind of mischief. Our head swine Eugene, for example, recently fell ill. He had stomach problems, can you believe it? Poor thing. I felt so sorry for him. I go to the pigsty at night to sing lullabies and stroke his fat snout. What do you think happened? He got better. Now he walks and eats and drinks like a healthy piggy should. I don't think it was my sympathy that helped though. He overcame the illness himself. I come to think of it, that's a stupid story. And it's stupid of me to feel happy for him. He'll be two sides of pork by winter anyway. Him getting better made no difference at all. Yeah. I see. Yeah, it's no fun being Eugene. <laughs> Have you learned anything from your parents? The girl sets her arms akimbo. Plainly, she's proud of her skills. Oh, there are so many things I've learned from mum and dad. These jokers, the moonshiners, tease me that my fiancé won't lack for anything. I'm a good cook, although I don't like cooking, and no one else likes what I cook. I'm good at washing and cleaning up. I can also shoot. Yes, my father taught me after I begged every day for half a year. If any bastard shows his face around here, I'll teach him. Miguel racks a slide of an imaginary pump-action shot- pump-action gun. Uh, pulls the invisible trigger. Snatches the gun adroitly by the middle of the barrel and blows away smoke from the imaginary muzzle. Aren't you menacing? Uh, anything interesting you want to tell me? Your choice. The girl chuckles ironically and rolls her eyes. That's one heck of a request. You know it's impossible, right? To say something interesting, when the furthest you've traveled in a year is to the rusty standpipe in the forest. Although, hmm. She furrows her brow and rubs her temples. I could you tell you the story of my name. I've always liked it. Uh, what's your name, by the way? I'm... The girl's waiting with obvious interest. Buddhist terrorist Kamasutra Dambave. Dambav. Emasculator. Alright, Donnie. The girl shakes her hand lightly, mocking a formal greeting. Nice to meet you, Donnie. I'm Beat Ruda. Quite an unusual name, isn't it? A wonderful name for a wonderful person. Young Beat Ruda smiles and winks at you. Once again, you marvel at Mother Nature, which gave birth to something so innocent, childlike and pure, yet at the same time, so amazingly attractive and tempting. Okay, what? I feel like that sentence can be taken... poorly. Oh, thank you. To be honest, I always worried I would introduce myself to a stranger, and they would mock me. I'm so glad you're not like that. Maybe others won't do it either, when at last I get to travel the wide world outside. The girl pauses to think, then claps her hands. So... Why did I bring up the subject of name, you ask? That's why. When I was still in my mum's belly, a terrible drought came and ruined our orchard and vegetable garden. Many animals died too, both in the stables and in the woods. The only thing that survived was autumn sown beetroot that dad hadn't even wanted to plant. So that's what we ate until October. Dad, mum, August, ma, ahem, and me and, and, me and my mum's belly. I continue. I don't know why I read continue. The late autumn when I was born was the time when mutants started coming out of our forest. My dad shot quite a number of them, huge spiders and myrmics. They're actually not bad to eat if you cook them properly, so they helped us last until the next harvest. But mum and dad never forgot the gift of beetroot. Oh, that's when I was born. They called me beetrooda. Oh, that's why when I was born, they called me beetrooda. After the humble vegetable that saved their lives. You see? Okay, I admit that's a, that is a nice story. Original, to say the least. Alright, uh, I'm afraid I have to go. Bye. Alright, let's see if they get mad at me for stealing. <laughs> Photo of a young girl. Seems it was taken in 2003. Don't worry about me crawling in there like a thief. Maybe I should equip my other outfit.
But now that we have the photo, we might be able to talk to the mother or maybe even to this daughter here. Let's see. Are you again? Traveler from faraway lands. Have you decided to chat a bit more with me? Okay, well. That works. At least we got her out of the room so we could steal. Try talking to August about the uh, photo first, then we'll talk to the father. Yeah. I don't want to say this. I don't want them to know that I dug up their grave. Uh, this is rather noble of you. The man shrugs. What's noble about it? It's just humane. Let's change the subject. Okay. So you can confront him about that and he will say that it was his daughter. Um, but there's no reason for it. We don't get anything out of it, I don't think. We might get a little bit of experience, but... I'll leave these people be. Now, I don't know if we come back here later. I think last time I played, we came back here, they were gone, and there was a bear in their house. So we'll definitely check it out later. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to go to the Drunken Lair and talk to uh, Varna Banana Devi Christu. I also want to see about trading. I need to clear out some of my inventory. A stick of dynamite! Absolutely. Nope, that's more than that's worth. Here. It's weird that wasn't stacked together. I still over encumbered. I'm trying to fix that. Oh, wait. Um, let's see. Sure. I'll trade for the diesel. Absolutely. Uh, get rid of that and that. Then give the diesel to Fidel. Sweet, I'm not encumbered anymore. That's all I cared about. The esoteric woman you've known for a while now is slouching, her gaze fixed on the hapless moonshiners, or mumbling a sad song to herself. Varna Banana is a sad fruit. Nobody's her follower or friend. She wanted to save the world, to bring some joy to the kids, but all people want is to drink and drink. Feeling your stare, the woman flinches, straightens her shoulders, and quickly regains her usual energy. Oh, hello, child. Tell me, do my words about the dangers of insobriety free you from your alcohol slavery? As usual, I only drink on holidays. Varna Banana smiles tiredly and wags her finger at you. Don't, child. The one who drinks on holidays is organizing a holiday for the devil and his Anunu Anunake in hell. Anunu Anunaki. Anunaki? I don't know. I've never seen that word. They don't... Uh, they drink the blood of babies and rejoice. They celebrate the death of the righteous man's morality. That doesn't sound right. Use the word holiday twice in one sentence. It sounds good in Enochian, the language of the angelic beings who stand always by my side. Perhaps it seemed to you that my sermon attracted a few people. I wish you could see the invisible crowds that surround us now. 
I believe you. There is so much empty space around your sermon to accommodate an invisible army. The cult leader first turns red, then pale, then angrily stomps her foot. Unbearable child, I could... I could order my angelic legions to attack you right this moment, to execute you like St. Adelbert. I won't tolerate your petty mockery. Who do you think I... uh, you are? It seems as if Steam is about to jet out the ears of Debbie Christou. Stupid brute. Just like everyone else out here. Oh, this is unbearable. That's it. We're done in this deplorable place. In fact, I've decided the Wasteland Dwellers are not ready for my cosmic wisdom. Our tour is over. We're going back to Krasno. The cult leader raises her nose in the air, turns back, and starts walking away. Her grim congregation follows in her footsteps. The tour is over. Back can report to the Mushroomer. Alright, we should be able to talk to her in Krasno, but in any Krasno, she should be at the, uh, on the ship. In that case, um, let's head back to Red Fighter. See if that upgrade is done, and then I can get the next upgrade, I think. The generator upgrade that we're currently waiting on unlocks the upgrade that I need for the last companion. And then I'm just going to start tearing through all these uh, locations and exploring. I probably should have waited to take on Shog and Blind Death after I got the next companion, because he's going to miss out on all that experience. Those two are worth a lot of experience. You see a small man in a leather vest and yoga pants. He looks at his watch and crosses his hands on his chest. If you want to buy something, you better do it soon. We're running late. Oh, where are you going? Maybe uh, you could help a lonely hitchhiker. You think that we could be going in the same way... You think that we could be going the same way as you are? No sense in lying. We're driving to Ultra Noye. If you go in the same way, we can drive you there. We're only for 50 rubles. Sorry, but it's a risque endeavor for us to take a hitchhiker. Oh, nope, going the other way. What do you got? Ooh, a lot of money. Okay. Perfect, because I have a lot of stuff to sell. Probably don't need that many. We'll do one more. I think three rope will be enough to get us through the, uh... Oh, I didn't realize I picked up cologne. When did I get that? Regardless, it'll come in handy. Nine twenty-one. but he also has ammunition that I want to buy, so let's keep on going. Take his money. Oh, he's an explosive too. Oh, we need that. Yeah, let's let's get the explosive instead. And I'll keep trading for it. Uh, what else do I got? Are any of these loaded? Doesn't really matter. Well, he's a little short. Uh, Painkillers are really good. I might actually take that instead. Because they're also extremely rare. And let's see. All 
I'm just going to pay that difference. It's only 25 rubles. I'm fine with that. And I think that's everything for now. Nine by thirty-nine and seven six two. All right, let's rock with that. Cool. So now we have what we need to blow up the statue under Krasno. Still want to get to Red Fighter first. Is that enough blowing up the statue is going to lead to a fight or not? against the the goat god hey more caravanners sure we'll we'll talk that's the same guy oh he's a curious 30 percent in four how's actually stand up to this yeah it is just better Is a TT pistol, which we already have, so I'm not worried about that. It's only the 50%, not worried about that. He has the same amount of money he had last time, right? I'm not going to use those. Um, I don't really trust my companions to use grenades. So I'm just going to sell them. And empty bottle. Just gonna sell those as well. A lot of coffee. All right, we'll just take that. Actually, let's grab this as well. All right, let's get out of here. So I've lost track of time. I don't know when I started recording. Uh, so I think I'll, we'll just try to make it to Red Fighter. And... No. No, you know what? I'm going to call the episode here. Off camera, I'll make it to Red Fighter. Uh, and then in the next episode, we'll see about getting the upgrade that we need for the... Uh, to get the companion. If uh, Then we have to leave and wait a while before we come back. And then he should appear. So after we do that, we'll head to, back to Krasno. Uh, try and blow up that statue. And... Um, then head back to Red Fighter. So a little back and forth in, in the next episode. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to call it here, and I'll meet you guys in Red Fighter in the next one. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.